G'day, I'm James, and welcome to a bonus video for the beauty and the thinking behind quadratics. So we've talked all about the algebra and the graphing quadratics in a particular course, but here's been one extra topic that sometimes appears in curricula and sometimes doesn't. So just in case your curriculum mentions it, I'll mention it here too. It's all about fitting quadratic equations to given data sets. Now we've actually already done this in a fun way in the last lecture. Do you remember doing personal polynomials where I wrote down for you a quadratic expression that actually spells my initials, J-S-T, and I wrote down a quadratic equation that actually spells my nickname, Jim, J-I-M. And if we go beyond quadratics, you actually write down longer formulas that spell longer words, like my proper name, James, J-A-M-E-S. So you can go to that website and learn all about how to do the personal polynomials. You'll see a great interactive web. You can actually play with it, type in your name. It will spell out your formula for you and even graph your personal formula for you. And you'll find videos there of me explaining the mathematics about how it all works. But, but let me do the mathematics here right now in the more general setting, just in case your curriculum wants you to do this. So I'll make an example right now of what some curricula like students to do. They might give you a little table of three data values. For example, when x is three, I'd like y to be 10. When x is five, I'd like y to be, I don't know, 13. And when x is 13, I'd like y to be 77 and a half. Okay, so three data values. And they say, please find a quadratic equation, some quadratic equation like this, ax squared plus bx plus c, y equals that, that matches that data. So you're gonna find three numbers, a, b, and c, such that if you put in x equals three and work out this formula for three, this expression for x equals three, out will come y equals 10. Put in x equals five, out should come the number 13, y equals 13, and put in 13 for x, and out should come y equals 77 and a half. That is find a quadratic equation that fits three given data points. And you look at that, and that seems hard. That actually seems really, really hard. All right, so I just made up that data set right on the spot. I've never done this before. What I'm gonna do right now is write down from the top of my head a formula that fits that data perfectly for you. But be warned, what I'm about to put on the board is gonna look incredibly messy and long and very, very scary. I'm gonna do it, and we'll all have a panic reaction because it's gonna look so complicated. And then we have a deep breath. We actually look at what I've done. You'll start to see some structure to it to the point that you'll realize what I did so that you can do it yourself as well and just write down the answer. All right, here goes. Here, goes my here comes my crazy answer. Here is a quadratic expression, quadratic equation that fits this data. I'm gonna do it right now. I'm very human. I might make some arithmetic mistakes, but I'll catch them, I hope. Here goes. I claim this does the trick. Y equals 10 times X minus five times X minus 13 all over uh, negative two times negative 10 plus 13 times X minus three times X minus 13 all over two times negative eight. I think I'm doing this correctly. Okay, plus 77 and a half times X minus three times X minus five all over uh, uh, 10 times uh, eight. Bingo, that's it. That is my formula that fits that data. That looks insane. Whoa, okay. My very first question is, is this even a quadratic equation? This looks nothing like one of those. Is it quadratic? Well, if you look at it, you see the number 10 out front here. You see a fraction with some x's on the top, but just numbers on the bottom. Actually, this is just the number 20 on the, on the bottom. So this is really 10 over 20 times some expressions with x's. In fact, I'll expand this out. I'll see an x squared. I'll see a minus 5x minus, th minus 18x plus 65. All right, so this is just something with x squared, something with x's, and something with the numbers. That's it. So it's got part of us like that. Plus, I'm adding another term with x squared, with x's, and with numbers. So I've got some, an x squared, some x squared there, some x squared here, and I've also got some x squared here, which would all combine to give me something times x squared, if I could work, work, would work this out. All the x's in here would give me some numbers. I've got numbers, numbers, and some x's. Numbers, 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 and x's. Numbers, numbers, and x's. Probably lots of fractions, but all those fractions will com combine and give me some 
probably fraction times x. And there's just a, it's the 65 over times a 10 over 20, and there's a, there's a 39 times a 13 over a negative 16, and there's a, a 15 times a 77 and a half over an 80. Okay, another fraction, but all those fractions combine to a single number, c. All right, yes, this is a quadratic expression. It's just not looking pretty, but it really is one of those. All right, so I've done it. I've written down a quadratic expression at least. Now, is this quadratic expression doing what I want it to do? Namely, if I put in x equals 3, work this out, do I get y equals 10? If I put in x equals 5, do I get y equals 13? If I put in x equals 13, do I get y equals 77 and a half? Well, let's find out. What did I do? How did I engineer things so that would actually happen? Let's start looking at x equals 3. Okay, when x equals 3, I've got, obviously I've got three pieces, three pieces, but I designed these two second pieces to disappear when x equals 3. Because look, put an x equals 3 into this part, I get 13 times 3 minus 3, 0 times stuff. This will just be 0. When x is 3, all that part is 0. Same thing here. When x is 3, I've got 77 and a half times 3 minus 3, 0 times 0, 0, all the 0, all that would be just 0. So these two pieces disappear when x is 3. So the only actions happening for x equals 3 is with this first term. And when I do put in x equals 3, look how I designed it. I've got something times something over something. When x is 3, I've got on the top I'll have 3 taken by 5. That is actually negative 2 times negative 10. So I have negative 2 times negative 10 on the top, which I've arranged to have negative 2 times negative 10 on the bottom. So all this cancels out just to be 1. In fact, it's 10 times 1. So if I put in x equals 3, I get 10 times 1 plus 0 plus 0, which is 10. Is this starting to have some structure to it now? Can you see it? Let's check the third one. Uh, the second one, sorry. x equals 5. What happens? Well, I designed two of the pieces to disappear when x equals 5. Can you see which two? When x is 5, this piece disappears. 5 minus 5, I get 0. This piece disappears. 5 minus 5, I get 0. Only this piece survives with x equals 5. And look what I did. I'll have 5 minus 3 on the top times 5 minus 13 on the top. So I'll get, a, what, a 2 and a negative 8 on the top. And look what I put on the bottom. I put the perfect bottom to match putting x equals 5 on top. So all that's 1. This becomes 13 times 1. So when x is 5, I get 0 plus 13 plus 0, which is 13. And now you can see it that I also designed this expression to actually vanish at the first term for x equals 13. Yep, vanishes for x equals 13. Second term vanishes for x equals 13. Third term survives. And I arranged it so this numerator and denominator match when x actually is 13. 13 take away 3, 13 take away 5, 10 and 8. All that cancels to be 1. So I'm left with 0, 0 times 1 times 77 and a half. This is a quadratic expression that matches that data perfectly. Now, I don't think I want to simplify it. I mean, I could probably make out the make it a little bit nicer. I'll write negative 16 there. I could write 80 there. I could write negative uh, positive 20 there. Maybe I'll do some basic simplification. But usually, sometimes when you do an exam type question or a textbook question, they don't ask you to do anything with it. They just say write one down. In which case, we're done. Fine. Okay, but if you had to simplify it, actually, it's not as bad as you think it's going to be. You actually can do it. And usually in your know, test questions, they make the numbers a bit much more friendly. So actually, you can actually do it with some ease. All right, but I love the process. So let's end off this video with one more example. Let's do a crazy example. In fact, if you want to pause after I write down the data set, see if you can write it down on your own and then compare what I do. All right, so here's the question. Please find a quadratic expression, quadratic equation, that fits this data. And let's make this, let's, let's go crazy, let's make this fun. Uh, when x is 1, when x is 10, and when x is 100. Okay, those three numbers. When x is 1, I'd like the square root of pi to come out. Oh, we have a bug. When x is 10, I'd like uh, 2 and a quarter to come out. And when x is 100, I'd like negative 33 uh, over, uh, I don't know, 1001 to come out. Okay, can you just write down a quadratic expression, quadratic equation that fits that data? Pause now if you want to give it a try. All right, here's how my brain does it. Here goes, it's gonna be three pieces. Uh, one, the first piece is gonna survive at x equals one, but I want to disappear at x 
being 10, and I want to disappear at x being 100. So I'll do that. That disappears at 10, that disappears at 100, so all that disappears for x equals 10 and for x equals 100. When I put, actually put in x equals 1, I want the numerator and the denominator to match. So I want a negative 9 and a negative 99 here. So when x is 1, this will be 1, and I want the square root of pi out front, so the square root of pi times 1. Beautiful. Now I want a second term for the 10, but I want to vanish at x equals 1 and x equals 100. x minus 1, x minus 100. That will make, the, make that work. When I actually put in 10, I want a denominator to counteract the numerator. Actually put in 10, I want uh, negative 90 on the bottom, 9 times negative 90, and I want 2 and a quarter out front. I think that will do it, because when x is 10, I get 9, negative 90, 9, negative 90, all that's 1, 2 and a quarter times 1. And finally, this third term, I wanted to vanish at x equals 1, vanish at x equals 10, so I want an x minus 1, x minus 10, and I probably want a negative 33 and 1,000 at once in front, but I want a denominator now to counteract the uh, numerator when x actually is 100, so when x is 100, I want a 99 down there, and I also want a 90 there. And I think that's it. So it'll be these three terms, this, this term plus this term plus negative 33 over 1001. Most people put a minus sign there. <laughs> I'm getting tongue tied, but there we are. There is a beautiful quadratic that fits that data. That's amazing. In fact, you can see it doesn't matter what numbers you put here. You can see if you want, say, I don't know, uh, m, n, and p, then you just have m, n, and p here. Any data you want. This is a beautiful method. In fact, if you want to spell my name, Jim, J-I-M, 10, 9, 13, that's how I do it. was doing it before. This is grand stuff.